go into the word and before we pray, I just wanted to make a quick announcement. Um, last Monday we we didn't have our Bible study, as you know. I wasn't feeling too well, and um, we had to postpone. But we're going to do something uh, special this week. This Sunday, after church, we're going to have our Bible school at 9 o'clock. Um, on Monday, this Monday that's coming, me and the pastor is going to be leaving out of town for a couple of days. We're going to a meeting, a pastor's meeting. So I don't want to cancel any of the Bible studies. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having our Monday Bible study one day early on Sunday night. So we're going to repost it. We're going to put it on Instagram. I ask if you guys can do the same. Make phone calls and let everyone know Sunday night after church we'll come back here and we will have our Bible class. Amen? Amen. Okay, God is good. Uh, let's go before the Lord and let's pray for tonight. Father, we come before you. And we thank you for tonight, Mordell. We thank you, Devla, that you've given us an opportunity that we can come into your presence, Devla. Magdata, Devla. An opportunity that we can worship and praise you, Father. And Devla, you've also given us an opportunity that we can hear from you, from your word, Lord. Tonight, I pray that you would speak to every one of our hearts, Lord. And that you would encourage us with your word, Mordell. That you would motivate us, Mordell. That you would take away fear from us, Father God and discouragement, Mugodil. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, we pray that you would move freely, that you would touch every one of us, and that you would do your work today, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen and amen. Okay. Um, those of you that know me when it comes to the Bible, I really like teaching out of the Gospels, the four Gospels. Uh, we did a Bible study not too long ago, a family Bible study on the Gospel of John. And then we followed up and we did uh, the book of Acts. Because I don't just like the four Gospels, but I really like learning about the 12 disciples in the Gospels. And the reason I like studying about the 12 disciples, because we can learn a lot from them. The 12 disciples were 12 men that walked with Jesus Christ for three and a half years. And as born-again believers and Christians, our goal is to walk with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So who better for us to learn from than men that walked and lived with Him for three and a half years physically? And one thing we can, we can learn about the disciples, we can learn from their mistakes, and they made many. And we can even learn from the good things that they've done. They've done many. Now I want to show you the life of the disciples. Yes, they... They had a rocky situation. They had ups and downs. There was good times and there was bad. But I want to show you something in Scripture tonight. First, we're going to look at the call of the disciples. Mark chapter 1, 16 and verse 20. The disciples leave everything to follow Jesus Christ. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, He saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Next verse. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Next verse. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Next verse. Without delay he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. I want to show you that excitement. I want to show you that passion and that desire. That as soon as Jesus came and saw them fishing in their boats, and as soon as Jesus said, come and follow me, the Bible says they left their nets, they left their boats, it continues to tell us they left their father in the boat and they left their hired men in the boats as well. That's excitement. That's a desire to follow God. You see, when we look at the story in Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20, you'll see that the disciples weren't just fishing in a little boat. They had a fleet of boats. Their business was not a small business. This wasn't just a hobby. They were out fishing with the boys. This was a big business that they had. They had many boats. 
as you can see in scripture, that they had hired men. They had servants. So, baribu chisas, kakala, fishermen. And what the Bible is showing us, it's making us a point that they were so excited to follow Jesus that they left all their business, they left all their boats, all their servants, they even left their father behind to follow Jesus Christ. That's called excitement. Now I want you to think about this. Do you remember when Jesus called you? Do you remember how excited you were to follow Jesus when He called you out of the world? When Jesus told you He had a plan for you and for your life? Do you guys remember how excited you are? Think about that for a minute. Think about yourself. The disciples were very excited to leave everything behind. And I want to share something with you tonight, and this is a fact. There are many people that have left their businesses to follow Jesus Christ. There are many people that left their families and their friends to follow Jesus Christ. And you know what does that? When you have a desire in your heart to serve Him. These men in Mark chapter 1 had a desire to follow Jesus and be His disciples. Amen? So I want to continue. I want to show you how they're excited. They left everything to follow Him. There's a desire. There's, there's a zeal. They're full of fire. They're, they're ready to serve the Lord. I want to show you a couple of scriptures of a few things that they did. Mark chapter 6 and verse 7. Calling the twelve to Him is Jesus. He began to send them out two by two, and He gave them authority over impure spirits. Look at the fire. The excitement. They're so excited that they're following Jesus, and they're serving Jesus, and they left everything for Jesus. The Bible saying, now Jesus sent them out to evangelize the world. He sent them out two by two to knock on doors and witness and preach the gospel to people and preach about the kingdom of God. They're so excited, they left their business and their father and they're knocking on doors and they're telling people about the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. And not only that, look what it says, Jesus also gave them authority over impure spirits. You know what that's telling us? The desire the disciples have, it led them to evangelize the world. And they even have authority over evil spirits. Let's continue. Luke 9, 6. So they set out and went from village to village. Here they are. They're witnessing. They're full of fire. Proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Not only are they going house to house and preaching the good news, not only do they have power over the enemy and evil spirits, they're even healing people. You see how amazing that is? Now I want to show you something else they do. Peter walks on water. We don't have the scripture up there, but I'm just going to rephrase that. Peter walks on water. The Bible shows us that Jesus fed four and 5,000 people, right guys? Do you know the disciples did it too? It was Jesus that broke the bread and blessed it, but it was the disciples that distributed it to the people. So even the disciples, there's so much fire and excitement that they're serving God, they're healing the sick, they're preaching the gospel, they're feeding the poor, they're walking on water, they're doing everything. Do you guys remember that time? Think about the time He called you to serve. Do you remember how excited you was? They're so excited, they're saying things, and these are a few quotes we're going to take from them. Matthew 16, 16, look what they tell Him. Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Bobby, one more. Go to John 6, 68. Simon Peter answered Him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Look at the beautiful things that they're telling Jesus. Do you guys see how excited they are? Do you see the work of God being done? Bobby, let's continue. Mark 14, 26. This is the night of the Last Supper when Jesus is about to be betrayed. And look what the Bible tells us. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus is about to be betrayed. They're walking to the garden. And the Bible says, Jesus and the twelve disciples sing a song. Do you see how happy? Do you see how great everything is going their way? 
They're walking on water. They're feeding the 5,000. They're healing the sick. They're going house to house preaching. They have authority over demons. Jesus is with them. They just ate the Last Supper. And now they're singing a song while they're walking. I think it's a great time. They're having a wonderful time. You guys see that? But then something happens. I want you guys to say that. Something happens. Something always happens. Listen. Mark 14, 46. Things change. Mark 14, 46. The men seized Jesus and arrested Him. So after they're singing the song and when they finally get to where they're getting, they see Judas Iscariot come with all the soldiers and the soldiers take Jesus. I panaveno Jesus. They arrest Jesus. One more verse. Mark 14, 50. Then everyone deserted him and fled. What happened to the song? What happened to the singing, the song, and everything going great, and everything going their way, and preaching the gospel, and having power over the enemy, and feeding the 5,000, and walking on water, and everything just going great? What happened? What changed? They got discouraged. They got discouraged because something didn't go their way. Jesus got arrested. And as soon they, as they seen a bad situation, as soon as they seen a situation they could not handle, they ran and fled and abandoned Jesus Christ. Tonight our message is called Feeling Discouraged. Feeling discouraged. The pastor shared a message about depression for a couple of weeks on Sunday, and discouragement has a lot to do with depression. I want to show you what the dictionary meaning for discouragement means. Losing the motivation to go forward. A loss of confidence. No hope. Disappointment. And depression. Because the disciples seen Jesus get arrested, because the disciples seen a situation that they felt they could not handle, they were discouraged and they lost their motivation to go forward. See, when Jesus was going in the garden, He told the disciples while they were singing the song, every one of you will turn away from Me. While they were singing the song, if you look at the next verse, every one of you will turn away from Me. And you know what Peter said? Lord, if they all run away from You, not Me. Verse 50, they all deserted Him and they fled. Every one of them. When discouragement comes to a person and to a servant, you lose the motivation to go forward. When discouragement comes to a person, you lose your confidence. You feel there's no hope. You become disappointed. You become depressed. Let me explain to you what went on. When you first started serving God, you were on fire. You wanted to go to everybody's house to preach the gospel. You wanted to knock on every door. You wanted to visit hospitals. You wanted to visit people that were sick and that were hurting. You wanted to help people. You wanted to preach the gospel. But as soon as a problem comes, you lose motivation to go forward and you turn the other way around. You see, it's sad that I'm saying this, but listen, when everything is going your way, when everything is going your way, it's easy to serve God. And it's easy to keep going forward. But when things are not going your way, that's when you turn away. As soon as the disciples seen it wasn't going their way, and Jesus got arrested, I sute mudarana mesaka kala soldiers, they became discouraged. And they ran away from Jesus Christ. The pastor shared an illustration. I'm sure you all know this, and I'm going to share it again. One day, a gajo, he went to a yard sale, and it just so happens, Choro yard sale, it was Satan's yard sale. And Kaigulo gajo ka yard sale, he sees all kinds of tools on the table for sale. And the gajo sees hate, he sees bitterness, he sees anger, all these tools, and the prices are with them. And they're very cheap. They're very cheap. He could, he could buy them. And so he sees one tool that's very worn out, it's very old, 
It's, he's, he knows it's been used multiple times, but it's the most expensive tool. So he goes to Satan, I pin all, why is this tool the most expensive, but this is the one that's worn out out of all of them? I'll Satan like that is good because that's my favorite tool. I use that one the most. I use that one the most because every time I use bitterness and hate and anger, sometimes those don't really work. But this one's the best. It works all the time. Which one is it? It's discouragement. Discouragement is Satan's favorite tool. Because if Satan can discourage you and make you think that you can't get out of this situation and make you think that you can't go forward and make you think you don't have the confidence to serve God and make you think that you're in depression and disappointment and there's no hope for you in your situation, then he can stop you from serving God. Listen very carefully. Satan doesn't want to discourage you because he wants to kill you or attack you or stop you. He wants to discourage you because he wants to stop your service to God. Because if he can steal your joy and your happiness, then how are you going to serve God? Am I talking to anybody? I know it's, it's recorded and it's going on YouTube, but I know I'm talking to the servants and the men of God and the women that are here in this church. And I'm asking you right now, this message is for us. I'm asking you, have you ever been discouraged? Have you ever served God and got disappointed? Have you ever not seen results? Have you ever said, Devla, I want to go house to house. I want to be dedicated to your word and I want to read your word. And no, Or how about, I want to share that word. Don't share that word because the boys know what you really are. How many times have you wanted to do something for the Lord and someone discouraged you and you didn't do it? Discouragement. It is losing the motivation to go forward. That's what happened with the disciples that day. As soon as they saw a situation, they didn't go forward. The Bible says they fled and they ran the opposite direction of Jesus Christ. Now I want to show you something. The first real situation the disciples faced, they ran away from Jesus. All it takes is one situation for a person to lose faith in Jesus. Do you guys hear that? Some people think it, you have to go through a hard life and good problems and good situations for you to lose faith and for you to run away and for you to lose hope and for you to get depressed. Listen, all it takes is one discouragement. One time. And you can lose faith. And you can run away. One time for you to be discouraged. One time... For you to lose hope in a situation or a problem in your life, a trial, and you can run away from God. Only one. Only one problem. Now, John chapter 20, verse 19 tells us what the disciples did during this problem. Jesus gets arrested, and now he's at trial, and they're going to kill Jesus. And you know what John 20, 19 tells us? The disciples were hiding in a room with the doors locked because they were afraid. You know what discouragement does? It brings fear. But not, not only that, when you get discouraged, ain't nobody going to get healed. Nobody's going to get visited by you knocking on doors. No one's going to walk on water anymore. There's going to be no one to feed the 5,000 and feed the homeless. There's no one preaching the gospel anymore. There's no one doing the will of God anymore because discouragement will bring fear and depression and it'll keep you in your room behind doors. Now, I got this message for myself and I share it with you guys. Listen very carefully. Right now, the disciples aren't doing the work of God. They're in a room. They're not serving God. Some of us here tonight want to serve God. We have plans to do so much. We want to go house to house. We want to fill the seats in this church. We want to save the lost. But as soon as a problem and a situation comes, you don't do it. You get stuck in your room with that idea. Am I talking to anybody today? 
Have you ever had that idea? We need to get a witnessing team. We need to go out. We need to get on fire for God. We need to go to the people. We need to go to hospitals. We need to go to funerals. We need to be ready when the pastor calls. We need to be ready to preach. We need to save people. And then a problem comes. And what happens, guys? You don't go nowhere. Discouragement will keep you where you're at. You will not go forward with God. And that's why Satan uses that tool for servants so that you won't go forward, so that you won't help the homeless, so that you won't knock on doors to preach the gospel, so that you won't get into God's Word. That's what he does with discouragement. So how do we, uh, how do we overcome discouragement? How do we overcome discouragement? How do we beat discouragement? Because listen, every one of us gets discouraged. Like the pastor said, every one of us gets depressed. Depression and discouragement is the same. And every one of us, no matter who we are, can be discouraged. In any way, any shape or form you can imagine, someone or something or a situation can discourage you in your service to God. So how do we overcome discouragement? Here's the resolution to the problem. John 14.1 Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Do you know when Jesus said this? He said this right before they arrested him. He told the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me. You know what that means? This is what he was telling them. What you're about to see, don't let it discourage you. You trust my Father, trust me too. You know why the disciples were discouraged? Because they didn't focus on Jesus' word and his promise. They focused on the problem. When they seen Jesus locked up and they seen the soldiers, they focused on the problem and that discouraged them and that made them run away from God. It was not one of them to say, guys, wait. He said that this would happen. He told us not to be afraid. He told us to trust in Him. He has a plan. Listen, don't look at your problem. Don't look at your situation. Don't look at whatever's trying to discourage you or trying to make you go forward with God. Look at God's Word. Stop looking at the situation and start looking at the promise of God and start looking at God's Word. The greatest way for you to overcome discouragement is when you look at the Word of God. The best way to overcome discouragement is when you trust in God's Word, when you trust in God's promise. When you feel that you're about to be discouraged and something's trying to bring you down, go to God's Word. You see, the disciples, they did something. When they were discouraged, they ran away from God. Well, you do the opposite. When you feel discouraged and you see you have a situation, don't run away from God. Run closer to God. When you have a situation that you feel is too much for you to handle yourself, don't run away from God. Don't lock yourself in a room the way the disciples did. Run to God. Run to prayer. Run to His Word. Run to His promises. His promise was, don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't pay attention with your eyes all of your problems. Not my dick pitch your problems. Not my dick pitch your worries. Not my dick for whatever is trying to cause you to have fear, don't focus on it anymore. Trust in my Father and trust in me. And the problem that is in front of you, God will take care of it. Do you believe that? Give the Lord a clap offering. When you feel discouraged and you feel someone's trying to bring you down and take away your joy, take away your happiness, run to God's Word. That is the way to get rid of discouragement through God's Word. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus told the disciples that and He's telling us, Today, and the kacha lumia sete avel trobolo, sete avel naswarimo, sete avel bedi, sete avel situation, sete avel holy, sete avel bitterness, sete avel trobolo. But I overcame it. I overcame the world. You know what that means? That means 
Your situation, Jesus overcame it. Your problem, Jesus overcame it. Sickness, Jesus overcame it. Whatever is trying to bring you down and discourage you and stop you from going forward, Jesus overcame it. We don't have to run away the way the disciples did. We don't have to stop singing the way the disciples did. We could continue singing and giving God glory and praise because Jesus Christ's Word, we can stand on it. And we can stand on His promise that He overcame the world. And I ain't going to let the world discourage me. Amen? Amen. Another Scripture, Deuteronomy 3, uh, 31, 6. Look what it says. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You know why the disciples were discouraged? Maybe a little bit. I don't blame them. Jesus got arrested. And right after that, He died. So now they thought that th their only help was dead. That's what they thought. But you know what happened? Jesus came back to life. He was resurrected. And right now, Jesus is alive. And Jesus is right here in the presence of every one of us. So we don't ever have to have that fear that Jesus might get arrested or He might die the way the disciples did. Jesus is always with us till the end of the ages. Amen? Amen. Another Scripture, Joshua 1.9 Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Look what God said. Don't be discouraged, because wherever you go, I am with you. So whenever you're walking in this world, I have a look situation, I have a look problem, don't be discouraged. Don't let that situation cause you to run away from God. Do the opposite. Run closer to God. Run closer to God because God is with you and He'll never leave you and He'll go with you wherever you are. Amen? Now I want to close with this. Listen. I don't care how big the mountain is in front of you. I don't care how dark the valley is that you're in. I don't care how high the water is that you're in or the fire that you're in or even the storm that you're in. You know what I care about? The God that you serve. Because the God that you serve can take you out of all of those situations. Stop focusing on those problems. Stop focusing on your trials. Stop focusing on the things that are trying to bring you down. And put your focus on God's Word. Because God's Word is the way to get rid of discouragement. Whenever something's trying to bring you down, go to God's Word. Because only God's Word can encourage you to serve Him and go forward. Amen? That was the word. God bless you guys. Pastor. Great message, Ike. Come on, let's stand up.